Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite and I'll be hanging out with you today as we continue on in our series about genetic technology. Topic for the day is going to be DNA cloning and recombination. Going to make some Franken DNA today. So here are your objectives and then we'll go ahead and get going. By the end of the video you should be able to understand the purpose of DNA cloning so why do it in the first place. Second, explain the concept of recombinant DNA and finally describe the process of DNA cloning. Now let me say this before we even get into it. When people hear cloning, they usually think of like cloning whole organisms, making Dolly the sheep or you know making a person just like you, whatever. That's usually what you think about in cloning. Today when we talk about cloning, we are just talking about taking a gene out of DNA and producing multiple copies of that one gene. So we're not cloning whole organisms, we're just cloning genetic material. So first thing, DNA cloning, why do it? What's the point of it? If you're a researcher or somebody in industry, sometimes it is very advantageous for you to be able to produce tons and tons and tons of copies of the same gene. If you look down at the bottom, there's a whole process there, but essentially what you do is you identify a gene that you would like to have. So let's say down bottom left there, there's a picture of corn. It would be nice if your corn were resistant to bugs. So you identify a gene that produces pesticide or that produces insecticide in another organism. You take that gene out that produces insecticide in the other organism, you put it into a bacteria, you produce a ton of copies of that gene, and then you can use that gene to figure out how to genetically engineer that insecticide production into your plants. Um, other things you can do with it, let's say you have got a gene that helps organisms to produce insulin. If you can produce a bunch of copies of that gene, then you now have a fertile ground for research about how you could get maybe cow or sheep to produce insulin for you. So the whole purpose of DNA cloning is to take a gene of interest and produce tons of copies of it so you can then work with it to do something useful. Now, a couple of concrete things that you should know about. First of all, you got insert pesticide resistance in plants. I talked about that. Alter bacteria for waste cleanup. So a couple years ago, we had the BP oil spill in the Gulf. One of the things that they tried to do to clean up that mess was to use bacteria that had been genetically altered to eat oil. So if you can find a gene in one organism that helps it to process oil and then put that into bacteria, you now have bacteria that can go out and clean up an oil spill. Um, in some cases, animals have been genetically engineered to produce meds for human use, and that the research would have been done using gene cloning. And same thing with hormones also. Now, in order to understand this whole process of gene cloning, you need to understand the uh, concept of recombinant DNA. Here's basically what recombinant DNA is. So base level, recombinant DNA is just DNA that contains genes or genetic material from multiple organisms. Couple of things to be aware of. Um, in bacteria, bacteria have got their normal genome, but also in bacteria there are these little chunks of DNA called plasmids. They are just little circle wheel donuts of DNA, and sometimes they help the bacteria to do something, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they're just genetic material that is hanging out there. Interesting fact about DNA. Back in the 60s, a researcher found that bacteria have got these enzymes called restriction enzymes. What a restriction enzyme does is if any foreign DNA enters that bacteria, the restriction enzyme goes in and it chops that DNA up so that it cannot do anything bad to the bacteria. So researchers thought, hmm, maybe we could use this DNA Ginsu knife or whatever to cut up DNA so that we can use it as a re-engineering technique. So what a restriction enzyme does, and there are hundreds of them, is restriction enzymes cut DNA at very specific sites. So right here you got foreign DNA. Let's say this is coming out of a flower. If you take and put your plasmid right here, that's from bacteria, and your foreign DNA into a, a vial and then dump in the same restriction enzyme. So there's a restriction enzyme called ECO-R1. It's a very common one. That restriction enzyme will go through and it will cut both DNAs at the exact same point. So it would identify a set of base sequences and it would make the cut in the same gene. So let's say here's a set of DNA. Your restriction enzyme might make the cut right there. And it would make the same cut in both sets of DNA. Now, the interesting thing is the way that restriction enzymes cut the DNA, it always leaves a couple bases hanging off on the end. This is known as a sticky end. 
And the reason that it is known as a sticky end is because these bases that are hanging out free right there will readily pair with bases that are like them. So let's say that you have got green DNA that has got a sticky end right there. And then we get some blue DNA that has the same sticky end. These two ends will stick together. And suddenly you have got recombinant DNA. Um, this all relies on that restriction enzyme's ability to cut both sets of DNA at the exact same place, which leaves these sticky ends able to stick to each other. So plasmid, foreign DNA, cut them both with a restriction enzyme, leaving the sticky ends. The sticky ends will hook to each other, and you now have got recombinant DNA that can be used for all kinds of different um, purposes. Also know that recombinant DNA is known as a chimera or an organism that has multiple types of genetic material and it is also known as a chimera. Alright, last topic, last slide for the day is this idea of DNA cloning. And in order to understand DNA cloning, you got to make sure that you understand the idea of recombinant DNA. So if you need to rewind, go back, make sure you understand that before you go forward. Essentially, here's what you're going to do. There are three phases to DNA cloning. you got to build, insert, select. So for the building phase, here's what you're going to do. All of this cloning relies, again, on that bacterial plasmid. So you're going to take your bacterial plasmid. He is right here. And we are actually going to stick two genes into it. So the first thing is you're going to take your gene of interest. That is the one that you want to clone going to use your restriction enzymes, you're going to get the thing cut up. Once you got it cut up, you can go ahead and add that to your plasmid. You see them doing that right here. Second thing you need to do, and this is a really important process, you need to add some sort of gene that is going to help you to know which bacteria have, have formed recombinant DNA and which ones have not. So a common one that is used is a gene called AMP-R. And what that gene does is it gives bacteria resistance to the antibiotic ampicillin. So what you're going to do is you're going to take and build your plasmid so that it's got this AMP-R gene in it. You can see it's going to be the orange gene that we're going to watch throughout. And that AMP gene is going to, you can see it's been incorporated down here. Remember, antibiotic resistance. Um, in this uh, plasmid, to get further selection, they are also using a LAC-Z gene, which will help us to further visualize which plasmids have taken up the needed DNA. So you've got your recombinant DNA, it's got your ampicillin resistance, it's got your LAC-Z gene. The gene that you want is being stuck right in the middle of that. And again, this is all using restriction enzymes and sticky ends. Once you have got this plasmid built right here, this is your custom designer recombinant plasmid with all three genes that you have stuck in it you got to get a DNA, or not a DNA, a bacteria to swallow that thing. So through a process of heat shocking and cooling, you can get a bacteria to open up and allow this foreign DNA to come inside. We got him right here. Problem is, there are all kinds of plasmids and DNA floating around, so we need a way to identify which bacterial cells have taken up our interesting gene combination and which haven't. So you take that E. coli or a ton of E. coli that you have mixed these plasmids with and you put them on an agar plate and the agar plate will contain a couple things. Usually in the agar mix you are going to have ampicillin, um, the antibiotic, and you are going to have something that reacts with this LAC-Z gene to produce a color. The reason that you're doing this is you've got natural selection at work here. Once you have put your bacteria down on this plate, if the DNA did not take up the AMP gene, then it's going to be killed off because there's ampicillin in that plate, so those bacterial colonies won't live. If it did not take up the LAC-Z gene, then they won't change colors. So LAC-Z on certain medians can cause a bacterial colony to turn blue. So you might have some bacteria that took up just the AMP gene. They would be alive, but they would not turn blue. If they took up both the AMP gene and the LAC gene, they will be alive and they'll turn blue. You now know which bacteria have got the gene of interest in it. Once you have identified that, you can take those colonies, transfer them to agroplates, and then let your bacteria reproduce at will. Every time those bacteria reproduce, they reproduce your gene of interest, which you can then take and isolate and study to your heart's content.
Hopefully that was understandable. I hope this was useful to you. It may have been a review from our lab the other day, so hope you got it. Thanks for joining us. This is the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite. We'll see you again.